was a dark and stormy night. A perfect night for any true horror fan. So I decided to watch the new Terrifier 2 movie. So I sat down to begin watching. And while I was watching it, I saw this sword and I thought to myself, Damn, I want that. So I got up and got some reference images and turned to Fusion 360 to get started. And what a mistake that was. So after an hour of dicking around with this, I decided to say, that, I'm going to Blender instead. So I imported all my reference images and got to modeling, and this took quite some time to do. But eventually I figured it out and got it just the way that I wanted it. But then I said, why stop there? I might as well render it, add some material, and maybe even throw it into a scene. So that's what I did. Now that the model was complete, I decided to start printing. So after what seemed like a billion hours of printing, it was time to start sanding and smoothing this down. So on the left you can see before sanding, and the right you can see after. It was now time to get my hands a little sticky and glue up all these pieces. Once the pieces were all glued together, I scraped off all the excess glue off of my fingers and it was time to prime the sword. I 3D printed this funky little turntable so I can rotate it easily while I was priming it. Once primed, I went back to sanding once again. Once the sanding was complete, I used a high gloss cherry red paint to coat the entire sword. This gives it a nice smooth finish so I can easily remove it from the sand later on. It was now time to head to the garage and do my least favorite part of ramming up the mold. I built a new wooden flask, went to my table, and grabbed all the tools I was going to need. Apparently, I forgot how to put gloves on. So once I mastered the art of how to put on gloves, it was time to begin making the mold. I wasn't too concerned about the seams from where I glued up the pieces, as I figured I'm just going to sand them down later. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut up for the next minute or so while you watch me just ram up all this sand into this mold and see how this comes out. The sword falls right out thanks to the talc powder. Now normally I use glue to glue up the other half, but this time I decided to use double sided tape just in case I want to make another sword again and I don't feel like painting and priming and doing all that shenanigans again. So I'll go ahead and I'll shut my trap once again while you watch me ram up the other half of this mold. Now that the mold is finished, it's time to gather up some metal and melt it down.
I'll just grab some ingots from when I melted down my boat. But wait, what's going on? I think it's trying to get away. I can't have that. At least it's heading in the right direction of where my furnace is. I better chase after it. Get back here, you little fucker. Ha, nowhere to go. It's a dead end. Gotcha. Well, that was fun. Stay. I'll grab another one before they all try and escape. I always use different crucibles for different metals that I'm melting. I also always check for cracks because the last thing I want is the crucible to fail and molten metal goes spilling all over the place because that could just be a big giant disaster. I thought I could fit both ingots inside the crucible, but that's just not going to work, so I'll just do one at a time. It's now time to play with some fire and light the furnace. I can usually melt aluminum in about 8 to 10 minutes, so this shouldn't take long at all. I'll use my steel mold to pour all the remaining metal into. Since there's not a cloud in the sky today, it's a perfect day to pour some metal. Since it did rain the other day, I want to preheat the mold just enough to make sure that there's no moisture left over. As I was checking my water bucket to make sure it was full, I noticed the school bus, right against my wall, which clearly isn't mine. So somehow my neighbor's toys always seem to end up in my yard, and if you ask me, I think someone just forgot how to spell. Okay, let's get back to melting. There's something about watching metal melt that's just so satisfying. It's time to grab the other ingot and add it in. I probably should have used tongs instead of just plopping it in like an idiot. Whoops, oh well. Since I already have a pool of metal already in there, this shouldn't take long at all to melt down. I should probably turn the gas off before skimming off the metal, but oh well. The metal's all ready to be poured, I just need my handy dandy pouring tongs, and then I'll be set. So I'll turn off the gas this time, and let's pour this metal. I wasn't quite sure if the metal filled in all the way because I didn't see it come out the other side so I just poured a little bit more in and that didn't take much at all. 
I guess I probably didn't need to melt down that other ingot. It's better to have more, though, than not enough. I always take a break to give the metal time to cool down and harden before removing it. This ingot I'll cool off, add it back to the pile, that way I have it for another day and another project. Let's open up this bad boy and see how this came out. And I think that's looking pretty dang good. As you can see, thanks to the large feeder on top, I have virtually no shrinkage. I'll melt down the ingot another day for another project, but now it's time to take this sword and go clean it up. So once again, I'll shut up for a few moments while I clean up this sword. Once I finished with the wire brush, it was time to take it inside and use the rotary tool for the rest. Once I finished with the rotary tool, it was time to take it back outside and polish up the blade. I started with a 200 grit sandpaper and worked my way up slowly all the way to 3000 grit. After I finished sanding, I took it to the polisher to give it a nice shine. Back inside we go, now it was time to start painting the handle. After two coats of paint, it was time to add on the gold flake. And let me just say that this speedball adhesive is not really the best for metal as it is really watery and it tend to pool up a lot. But after numerous hours of applying this, I finally got it done. To finish off this handle, I applied a clear coat to make sure that the paint and the gold flakes don't chip off. So here is the finished sword. I think it turned out awesome. Let me know in the comments though what you all think. If you'd like to download the model that I used for this sword, I will put a link down in the description on where you can pick this up. Since there's no room available on my shelf for this sword to fit, I went ahead and I 3D printed some brackets so I can hang this on my wall.
So I hope you all enjoyed this project and this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.